On the weekend of July 28th, West Moberly was roaring with celebration. The time for West Mo Days was back, and the people were ready for the fun weekend that laid ahead of them. West Mo Days isn't just about the fun, of course. It's making sure our tradition stays prospering and known. For more of the details, we'll let George Desjardins, one of the West Moberly elders, explain. Uh, yes, it was called Treaty Days. It actually started in the early 1900s after the treaty was signed. The people used to gather in Hutton and Hope to receive their annuity payments and <clears throat> their uh, uh, the goods that they were promised, things like sh uh, sugar, flour, salt, potatoes, etc. They used, to, they used to hand them out. And during the time that they gathered there, the people gathered there, uh, they would play games, visit uh, for two or three days running. Uh, they'd they'd uh, have uh, round dances. Basically just get together, visit, have fun for a couple of three days. But around about 1930s, 1940s maybe during the Second World War, they got they got they kind of got away from that, and then uh, and for about 30 years they didn't do that, and then back in uh, in the mid 80s, West Mobley First Nations and the collection and the other seven treaty nations here in northeastern BC. Uh, got together at a chief's meeting and they talked about rekindling that relationship, that type of friendship. So West Mobley decided to be the first community to put on what we call Treaty Days and eventually it became known as West Mobley Days. West Mo Days is filled with traditions that date back to the very first Treaty Days. These include axe throwing, smoke meat competition, bow and arrow competition, and a traditional hand game called Pakisi. The West Moberly Chief, Roland Wilson, explained how the game worked. Well, the hand games is, the, the, it's called Pakisi. Uh, the Cree word for it is Pakisi. Uh, typically, we just call it hand games, and it's basically a, it's a game where you take a token, something like a marble, and you hide it under a blanket in one of your hands. And when you bring your hands out, the person on the other side, one person on the other side has to guess what hand it's in. And so we got drums going and uh, everybody's moving to the rhythm of the drum and they're guessing with different hand signals. There's no talking, it's all hand signals that you have to guess at. And uh, you have a pile of sticks that you're trying to win. So there's 13 sticks and if you get all 13, then you win the game and it's uh, two out of three games on that. It's one of the oldest gambling games around. Uh, it, it was, it's been around forever. Uh, and First Nations culture, right? It's uh, used to play for horses and some some play for for women. And that doesn't happen anymore. We don't play for women anymore. But they, uh, like, uh, there's big prizes. Fort Nelson is ha having a hand game tournament, uh, fifty thousand dollar first prize for that. Ours isn't anywhere near that big, but uh, it's a good a good event. Uh, I think it's there's four players, and I think it's uh, four thousand for first place. So. It, each player gets a thousand bucks. It's not bad for a weekend of work, right? And it's a lot of fun. Lots of people watch it. It's, it's one of our main events out here. All of the games and competitions aren't just for fun, but also a chance for people to learn essential life skills. George went on to explain how in the early days, these games helped hone their skills that were needed to survive everyday life. Basically, all the games are based on life skills, like, bow and arrow shoot, uh, and it's for the youth, the women, the men, uh, some new introduced games like horseshoes, uh, volleyball, but the historical game that's being played is where you can hear the drums now. It's called uh, uh, hand games, which is kind of like a gambling game. Uh, but uh, they're playing for a $5,000 purse, so st competition is really stiff. 
It's a, but it's not just limited to adults. It also includes uh, children and even the elders that are playing in the, in the competition, uh, they don't take the children lightly. They're, you have to be good to play this game, especially to take first place. Uh, there's other things that happen also, like the endurance race. You just saw the runners take off a little while ago, which uh, just about any time now, they should be uh, 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 visible up on the hillside here. It's a seven, uh, six point nine three kilometer run. The record is held by our local, uh, uh, our local runner, Bobby Brown. 39 minutes, eight seconds. He's running with an RCMP officer from town who's gonna to try and set that record today. And believe it or not, Bobby's cheering him on. <laughs> He's held that record for roughly 15, maybe 20 years. I can't even remember when he set that I record. Need my cutters and over to and, the and every year they, uh, they, uh, uh, they, Somebody tries Driving to break the record. To the uh, only one it's runner Moshe, came close, Brown was was short by five seconds. <laughs> yeah, he was really upset. He was determined to break it. Um, and that was about 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. Um, other games that happen is like, you just heard the announcement, dry meat cutting. That's a competition, that's a life skill. Uh, what they're hoping to do also is to have uh, a bannock, bo uh, bannock making and a tea boiling contest over an open campfire. Uh, you just don't, you have to start the campfire yourself. See how fast you can get to boil water. And then uh, you make yourself a uh, uh, campfire bannock, we call it. And uh, that's a life scale competition too, because that's what they would do out on a trap line. Um, uh, axe throwing was just a competition, see, because that was one of the favorite pastime of the old people a long time ago, was throwing an axe. And uh, we kind of refined it. They used to, uh, uh, a bunch of them would get together and they would pick a tree probably about a foot in diameter and see how long it would take them to cut it down just by throwing an axe at it. But they don't do that now. They actually have a bullseye that they throw out and it's based on points. I competed yesterday and lost miserably. I hope to do better in bow and arrow a little later on today. Um, they have all kinds of activities happening here, even for the kids. Uh, the bouncy castles, the dunk tank, which Officer Scott is going to volunteer to be dunked here sometimes this afternoon. They have uh, other things also happening. Uh, there's a really exciting game that's probably going to be played this afternoon. It's called, uh, it's a mixture of musical chairs and scavenger hunt. What they do is they line up a bunch of chairs and whoever wants to compete, they go sit down and then the announcer will say, go find me sunglasses. Then the people in the chairs have to run up into the crowd and go find sun, uh, sunglasses. Come back to the chairs and sit down. But while they're out looking for sunglasses, the organizer will take one or two chairs away. So that will Im eliminate people until there's down to two. It's really exciting. A uh, lot, of, lot of participation by the crowd itself, making sure uh, people find what they want. Uh, one of the funniest things is, uh, and this happened by accident. One year they said, uh, uh, go find me cowboy boots. Well, um, the, uh, one of the counselors, Dean Doki, and the lead guitar player from the group, the tribe,
were the only two people wearing cowboy boots in the crowd. Needless to say, they got attacked. I think uh, Dean was running for his life and they managed to get the boots off him before he hit the ground. So now, usually that's one of the, uh, one of the things they have to go look for now. That's if he's here. <laughs> Don't be mistaken. This weekend isn't just for the First Nation communities that surround the Peace Region. Chief Roland encouraged everyone to come and enjoy what the weekend offers. It's important for everybody that it's, there's always this divide between us and them, you know, and this is, this is a little bit of a, a, to show that we're no different than anybody else. You know, they have their events in, in Chetwin and Fort St. John, you know, and we have, we have our events. Um, you know, we, we welcome everybody to come out and, and do that. Everybody around here does rodeos and stuff like that, you know, and it's, it's, it's trying to separate that divide between us, you know, and we all live here in the peace country and we should all get along, you know, and, and for, for at least the weekend we can get over our differences and, and just get together. With the amount of activities that Westmo Day has, it's hard to pick just one favorite. George has been part of Westmo Days for 25 years and had an answer almost immediately. It's actually, there's a combination of things that I really enjoy about West Mobley Days. It's watching the people come together and participating as a group, uh, basically a family group, because in First Nations culture, uh, when people come together, it's like being considered family. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. Uh, I like seeing that. The other thing I like seeing too is also the people, where they come from. Uh, we have, t so far this morning, we have people here from Mexico. Yesterday, we had people here from Kenya, the Netherlands, England, uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua. Uh, yeah, and uh, we've, we've got people coming from all over the place. And, and we're proud of that because they're coming here uh, to come and see, to come and participate. And we welcome everybody. Everybody's welcome. There's nobody, and everything's free. It, uh, the, only, the only thing that you will have to pay for is uh, if you enter a competition. And that money goes towards paying for the prizes that are gonna be handed out. Lots of prizes. We're gonna be doing door prizes pretty well all day long, as uh, soon as we get given the word. But my favorite part of all this, and I've been doing it now uh, for about 25 years, is being the MC. And what I really like about that is you won't believe the things you can get away with saying as an MC. <laughs> we also asked Chief Rowling what he believed to be the best part of the weekend, and he was quick to answer as well. Meeting everybody. Everybody that comes out. Uh, Mayor Gw uh, Gwen Johansson was out here uh, yes, uh, on the first day. She missed supper, but. Uh, uh, she came out and visited us, uh, Mayor Gwen Johansson from Hudson's Hope. Um, you know, just, there was a, a couple from Italy. Uh, a mom and her son were driving, touring around uh, BC and, and they were driving through Chetwin and they saw a flyer talking about West Modes and they thought they'd come out and check it out, check it out. And they drove out here and had dinner with us. You know, they were from uh, some place in Italy uh, over here. We had uh, a, a couple of people from South Africa were here. You know, uh, 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 um, Costa Rica, not Costa Rica. One of the islands down in the Caribbean there, the, uh, Puerto Rico, they were here. You know, just people showing up, just ch wanting to check it out. And that's what it's about, you know. So it's, it's, it's a, a, a friendship kind of thing. Everybody, we forget about business for a couple of days and just get together and have fun, and play some games and have some laughs. Eat some uh, Indian tacos and everything's good. 
With the help of everyone involved, they have made sure that a tradition that lay dormant for 30 years didn't stay that way. Westmo Days has created somewhere for people of all generations and backgrounds to come together and enjoy traditions that have been practiced for hundreds of years. With friendly competitions, great food, and kind-hearted people, it's easy to see why this weekend has become one that everyone looks forward to every year.